This is AUGforums.com Real Talk, an unfiltered and independent perspective on Acumatica Cloud ERP. First, thank you to our sponsors, Repay, DataSelf, and Velixo. Please take a minute to support this podcast by clicking each one of the sponsor banners located at AUGforums.com slash sponsors. Our sponsors track clicks, and every click helps to support this podcast. My name is Tim Rodman, and I want to mention two more things in this pre-recorded intro before we get started. First, I'm always looking for victims, ahem, I mean guests, on the podcast. If you use Acumatica in any capacity, no matter how small, I'd love to talk with you check out AUGforums.com slash podcast and click the link near the top of the page to learn about being a guest on the podcast. Second, I'd love to see you listed on my Rolodex. Check out the instructions at AUGforums.com slash Rolodex to see how you can add yourself to the list. All right, that's it for the pre-recorded intro. Let's get started. Today is Monday, January 17th, 2022, and this is episode number 61, Dave Dozer, a Fast Start Acumatica partner. Dave, thanks for coming on the show today. Hey, I appreciate it, Tim. Um, I'm excited to be on here, and um, I'm always, always glad to sit down and chat with you. So, hey, before we get into what is a Fast Start Acumatica partner, I always like getting the background of... Uh, people who are brave enough to be a victim. I mean, a guest <laughs> on this podcast. So, you know, get, give us a background on you. Where, where did you start off? Uh, we can go back to where you were born. Where'd you go to college? You know, how'd you get your start? Oh man, I, I can take up your, your whole episode just with that. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I'll tell you, it's kind of a winding road um, to, to end up here. And, you know, I'd say probably like most people in the ERP industry, I wasn't, you know, a, a six-year-old sitting at home dreaming of, of selling software for, for a living. Um, but, you know, here, here we are. So yeah, I actually, um, I was born and raised in um, Ohio, kind of in a, in a small rural town, a little bit south of, um, Columbus and you know went to a high school kind of literally out in the middle of a middle of a cornfield um so you know I really was kind of during high school very into the arts and music and writing and and those sort of things but um you know kind of coming from from that area I said well you know I've got to got to do something to get a real job someday so um some some college recruiters came in um I think my junior or senior year and um kind of sold me on accounting and which, you know, I, I said, well, people always need accountants regardless of, of what business they're in or what they're doing. So it kind of seemed like a, a good, good plan. And it was actually, um, I actually went to DeVry, um, kind of picked that because it was a technical school and I was looking to, to kind of be more technical focused and, and sort of get in and, and get out, so to speak. And they had a good accelerated program. So I, I went and um, right out of high school started to get my accounting degree and and honestly I realized um, probably about halfway through that I, I wasn't necessarily in love with um, with accounting and and doing debits and credits and bank reconciliations and and all that good stuff. Um, but you know I was I was that far in and kind of said well let's see where where this ends up and you know I'm going to see this thing through and had a you know the opportunity to get a lot of great experience. Um, I got to intern at a, at a tier two auto manufacturer. So I got to, you know, really learn a lot about, you know, raw materials and um, kind of started getting into manufacturing or, or realizing at that point that, you know, I liked the manufacturing aspect and, and things like that um, a lot better. When you than, interned, did, did you intern in the accounting area? I, I did. Yeah, I'll be honest. My my job mainly consisted of um, taking big piles of POs and big piles of paper receivers and um, matching those up and, and stapling them together and then putting them in a filing cabinet. So hey, that's that's more sophisticated than my first accounting job. Mine was entering AP bills. That's it. All day, every day. <laughs> 
Yeah. So, you know, those, um, those can be fun jobs, great ways to learn, but I was like, you know, I, I don't know if I have this, um, has this in me to do all day, every day necessarily. Cause you know, a lot of folks, um, they go accounting kind of go more the, the CPA route, um, and, and kind of double down on the accounting side. But I, I kind of learned through that experience and, and just through school that, you know, I really like the technical side. I, I like the manufacturing side of things and, and kind of said, well, you know, I'd, I'd rather go in that direction, but, you know, nevertheless, I, I powered through, got my, um, got my accounting degree and, oh, geez, at, at that time I was maybe 21, um, had really never heard the words ERP. It, it wasn't, you know, exactly something that even, even in school, they really kind of talked about a whole lot. Um, and so I'd kind of, basically settled into to kind of a more of an IT job, um, which, you know, I wasn't using my, my degree whatsoever. And um, kind of, I guess, dumb luck wise, um, one of the guys I worked with, he was like, hey, um, my wife's company is, is looking for people and it's sort of accounting related. Would you be interested? And I said, well, yeah, I'd, you know, I'll check it out, see, see what it is. And um, it was for a uh, for a quality assurance tester job um, at a software company called Macola. And, um, you know, for, for folks that know me, I've, I've inadvertently spent the last, um, you know, 15, 20 years of my life doing a, a lot of Macola stuff. Um, but that was sort of my entry into um, ERP. Again, I, I'll be honest, I really didn't know what the acronyms meant. I didn't really even totally know what the, the job entailed. I was, I was basically a kid and they said, hey, you know, here's a bunch of bug reports. Um, use your accounting skills and, and figure out if these bugs are corrected or not, you know. <laughs> I, hear, I hear two things in that story so far that I've heard multiple times. One is it was totally accidental. <laughs> you right. were not setting out to get into ERP. But then two, you didn't actually say this, but you mentioned, you know, the art kind of background. And in my opinion, you know, when I met people with more of the art, non-science background, they're actually the ones who are the best at ERP. I mean, I consider you one of the, the, the good ones in the ERP. And I think it's interesting that it's, it's almost more of an art than a technical skill. And I, I find that people who were like liberal arts backgrounds, even um, a lot of times they're, they're better at implementing ERP. I don't know why, but it, it's kind of interesting. It's definitely a merging of, of skills, I think. And, and Hey, I, I really appreciate on um, the sentiment. Um, you know, I, I think very highly of, of you and what you've accomplished over the years too. So that, that coming from you, I, I really appreciate that um, quite a lot, but, but yeah, I, I think you're spot on with that. I mean, in, in high school and even in college, I was, you know, into music and in, in bands and, you know, we, we played crappy dive bars and, and wrote terrible music and, and did all that. And, and I really found as I got more into ERP and, and really liked it that, you know, you've got to have the technical understanding of things and understanding of accounting and distribution and those pieces. But, but I think kind of having that creative side helps you really think about the best way to solve problems. And I, it sounds dumb to say, think outside the box, but, you know, apply those technical pieces and, and solve issues and solve problems and, and kind of humanize it um, in a way. Also, your writing crappy music comment makes me think, you know, maybe an important skill is not being afraid to fail because you're going to break stuff and not being afraid to break stuff and knowing that you're going to be able to fix it when you do. Maybe that's also a trait, you know, that's important when you're implementing ERP. It, it, it probably doesn't hurt. I'm especially having that ability to, to get up in, in front of a room full of drunk strangers um, that, that, you know, have no interest <laughs> in, in hearing what you're doing. So, <laughs> yeah, maybe it's kind of similar to getting up and giving a training class on how to use uh, Acumatica, for example. Maybe. <laughs> I, I think probably if, if everybody did some shots before the training class, they, they might um, be a little smoother. So. <laughs> Especially if you're uh, going to be at the summit next week and doing uh, like a Tuesday morning session, you know, <laughs> you could oh, be yeah, in that the, same situation. Yeah, man, that, those are always the, um, the rough ones. Everybody's um, dragging a little bit on those for sure. <laughs> So you but, land with McColl in it, and I've never understood this exactly, but it, so you've got exact and McColl, I've heard. Maybe you give, give a little like 
what is McCola and it, what did it start in Columbus or I, it, I, I don't really know that story. It, yeah. So when, when I, when I came on board, it was sort of right after the, the transition from McCola to exact. So when I started, I, I was technically an exact employee, um, but McCola as a product actually started in Marion, Ohio, which is a, a kind of smallish town um, a little bit north of Columbus. Um, and it started out as McCola. And really through the, the 80s and into 90s, they were really big. Um, you know, it got to a point where they occupied multiple buildings um, in Marion there. I, I don't know the exact count, but I, I want to say they had between two and 300 employees. Um, if anybody fact checks me on that, it's probably wrong, um, but just kind of off the off the cuff. And, and they really were kind of the go to you know, ERP as far as accounting and distribution and manufacturing and MRP and, and all of that. And, you know, kind of in the uh, early 2000s there, they were acquired by Exact Software, which was a very large ERP company out of um, the Netherlands. And over in the Netherlands in that area, they had an ERP product, um, well, they still do, um, called Exact Globe. And it was sort of, you know, honestly, they were kind of the Microsoft of, of the Netherlands, you know, like they, everybody in the Netherlands runs um, exact products, basically. And obviously, I don't know the insider pieces of it, but when they bought McCola, I think it was probably to kind of try to get a, a foothold and, you know, get into the, um, the, the U.S. market. So there was kind of that transition period right in the early 2000s where McCola had a, um, their product was called Progression. And then when Exact bought McCola, they sort of merged the accounting um, and banking side of functions from the Exact Globe product um, with the manufacturing and distribution from the Progression product and, and came out with McCola Enterprise Suite. And that's the version that I really got introduced to and, and started working with when, um, when I first joined McCola. Um, so I was testing all of the financials and banking and AR and AP sort of things um, in the exact McCola ES for short um, version there. So there was kind of a little confusion just in, you know, how products were positioned, what version people should be on and, and all of that. But then the, the ES version kind of got more traction and you know as you go through the 2000s and the the 2010s was really kind of the version that um that people started to get on until there was a McCola 10 version and I'll I'll save that for a, a little bit later in the um conversation as it's kind of pertinent to um my background here but um McCola kind of then switched from being the company to the product if if that makes sense I think it's interesting that this will uh, is pretty much guaranteed to happen at some point. But so far, here we are in 2022. Welcome to 2022, by the way. Yeah, it doesn't and, feel uh, like it. <laughs> <laughs> Acumatica starts uh, right around 2008. So here we are 14 years in, and we are still in a situation where the company is called Acumatica and the product is called Acumatica. And that just that that fact right there is huge. You know that you're not dealing with, multiple products under the hood and they're getting renamed all the time. I mean, I've heard that, that story that you're telling multiple times with other products and boy, what a big deal with Acumatica to just have one company, one product. It's so clean. It really allows just a lot of clarity and communication. Yeah, it does because really, you know, that that's a big important thing, especially as you're talking about selling software and implementing software, there's a lot of software out there and, and you know that, and I know that, and you know, a lot of people know that, but having that consistent message, kind of consistent leadership, th those things honestly are, are more important, I think, than features and functions, because those things come, those are, you know, sort of like talking about the, the liberal arts side of things or the, um, the more abstract side of things earlier you know there's certain blocking and tackling that you expect from every system but then having that clarity of vision that stability those, those things are so important you know when when looking at products i totally agree with you 
before we go further, I, I want to ask another question back on the original acquisition there. Uh, hey, you threw out a, an employee guess. Let's see if you can guess on the, the date, or the, <laughs> the year, because I'm looking at your LinkedIn. It looks like you uh, came on board there around 2004. Do you think it was around 2000 or just after that, that uh, exact acquired McCullough? Oh, gosh. Um, if I had to pick an exact year, I would say 2002, maybe. I'm probably wrong. But somewhere in that neighborhood of uh, around the 2000 mark. I think it's interesting because Great Plains and Solomon Software, Solomon, which has uh, some history shared with Acumatica, that happened right around that same time frame. There was these acquisitions going on. Microsoft eventually acquired both of those products. That's interesting. I didn't know that about exact. It was kind of in the same time period. It, yeah. So I think maybe, you know, there were some things that us normal people aren't privy to now, but but there was kind of a lot of shaking up in, in that time period and sort of, you know, some of the seeds were sown for for kind of where we're at today and in, in the ERP market, you know. Yeah, I've heard there's there was a lot that happened in the late 90s related to Y2K in the sense that a ton of companies implemented new ERP systems because they were all terrified of Y2K. And it was like boom time for ERP implementations. And maybe that surge of customers, you know, made them acquisition targets or something. I don't know. Yeah. Us normal people don't know what was going on there. <laughs> yeah, we, we weren't in those, in those conference rooms. That's for sure. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, so, you know, McCola was really my, my entry into the, into the space um, in, into this business and, you know, I, I showed up and I, I did my testing and I, I did that for a couple years and, um, you know, got, got pretty good at it. But I, I then was actually looking to make a move from Columbus to St. Louis for, for personal reasons. And it just so happened, you know, everything fell into place and, and the stars aligned. Um, and the office at the time for, for exact that was out in St. Louis was looking for a consultant. And that's another thing at the time, I, I, I'll be very honest at that point, I was probably, you know, 24, maybe I, I had no idea what a consultant actually did. I just know they did stuff with the software. Um, I, I went and I, I interviewed for the job and, um, you know, the, the folks in charge gave me a, gave me a shot and did pretty okay with it. Um, you know, I, I ended up being one of the higher performing consultants um, at the organization and did that for, geez, I think four years or so, um, consulting directly for, um, for McCola. And then um, I, I actually got a little burnout with it. I, I had small kids at home and, you know, was traveling 75, 80% of the time. And, you know, it can be a little rough when uh, my, my son, who's almost 18 now, he was, he was real little and was looking at a toy catalog and had circled um, an airplane in the catalog and was like, I want a plane for Christmas. And I was like, why, why do you want an airplane? And he said, well, if I have an airplane, then you won't have to go to the airport all the time to, to get on a plane, you know? So I kind of wow. said, well, you know, maybe, um, maybe I need to be home a little bit more. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, I, I kind of took a step back there and I, I left Macola, um, but I, I kind of stayed in the Macola family, so to speak. And I actually went and um, got a position as a business analyst, um, again, in the auto industry um, for a, for a tier two auto manufacturer um, that used Macola. So it was kind of a, you know, not, I don't want to say easy, but it was a get up, go to the office nine to five type of job. So it afforded me the, the opportunity to, um, to be home and, and with my kids, uh, a lot more. So it was good. I, it was a great experience and, um, you know, really enjoyed working there and, and two, it gave me some insight, more insight into that industry when, you know, I interned in college, like I said, I was stapling papers together. Um, but here I had a lot more, you know, responsibility with the ERP system and, and um, with day-to-day -day operations and, and things like that. So it was a great, you know, learning experience and opportunity, um, really getting deep into things and, and into the weeds. And um, so it was a, a really good experience there. And um, I, I'm curious on that experience. If you found for me, I, I also kind of entered ERP on the consulting side. 
and and then I went in house for about four and a half years, and I felt like it was there that I really learned the ERP system, especially from a what does a consultant do side of things. Because as a consultant, I always felt like an imposter. It's like what what am I really doing for you? You could do this yourself. But then after working in house, it kind of gave me an idea of what a consultant really does. I'm curious, was that your experience with that uh, in house job? It, it was. I had a very similar experience with that. Just because, yeah, same same way. You know, I, I kind of saw everything through a consulting lens, and and also, you know, one day you're working with one type of customer and one industry, and the next day you're doing something wildly different. So from a consulting standpoint, you're not always necessarily like super laser focused on a particular industry. Um, and, and I learned a lot again, between, you know, what a consultant does versus kind of a in-house person, um, you know, the strategic versus the, the technical or the, or the tactical things that, that need to be done. So it, it was it was really kind of eye opening and and honestly, having that experience really kind of helped me later on when I got back into consulting to kind of really understand, you know, what it's like to be the person on the other side. You know, that's interesting. Yeah, I had the same experience. That's cool. Yeah, and and I kind of carried that out. Um, I, I left that company and I ended up kind of freelance. Um, I guess nowadays you would call it fractional um, C, CTO or, or something to that effect. But I, I left that company and I went and split my time um, between two other companies that were both, um, you know, running McCola as well. And in that, I, I kind of got to grow a little bit because I was responsible for their um, ERP systems, but I was also responsible for anything that plugged into the wall. So, you know, um, the servers, infrastructure, websites, everything. So that was a great opportunity to kind of start to learn and understand outside of just ERP, here's all the other sort of pieces and parts that are, you know, really necessary to, um, to, to run a business from an infrastructure standpoint. Do you feel like that made you like ERP more or less? Like, did you like the variety of doing the other IT stuff or how that impact the ERP side of things? I, I did like the variety. Um, I'll, as an individual, I'm a person I always like to kind of find and, and take on new challenges and, and new things. Um, but it gave me a almost a more respect for the ERP side of things because you know, all of those things are critical to a business, but the, the ERP side, I mean, that's really the, the lifeblood of, of the organization. Um, and and I, I found that out of all those things, I, I enjoy that a lot more than, you know, trying to, trying to update an exchange server or something like that. <laughs> sure. Yeah. A lot of that stuff that's got pushed to the cloud nowadays, right? Right. And, and, you know, that's kind of part of the transition too, is, is even back then a lot of, most everything was still in house and, um, you know, just through the way it systems are distributed and, and deployed now, it's, it's really a lot different in a, in a positive way, you know, you're not having to try to patch a server at, you know, 2 AM on a Saturday night or something. It's still maybe has to happen, but it's somebody else's job. So <laughs> And being in the IT department, I'm curious, here's another thing I've found that, you know, it's almost like IT is the least qualified to run the ERP system because the ERP is like, it's the business side. It's the least IT thing about IT, but it usually lands in the IT department. Did you feel like in an IT role that you were positioned to own the ERP system well, or did you feel like it might've belonged better in more on the business side, like the operations side, or even the accounting side? not the IT area. I'll say in, in those particular instances with the companies I was working with, I, I think I was pretty well positioned to, to own it just because they were smaller companies. Um, and, you know, with my background and, and kind of at that point had a very good understanding of the business side of things and able to, to apply that to the ERP system and the software. But, but even now from a consultative standpoint, when, when we go and talk to an organization, you know, kind of like you were saying there, we, we really try to sort of hammer home that IT needs to be involved in any sort of ERP project. 
that they're really not the best folks to own it. Um, and, you know, nothing against IT folks. I've, I've been one for a lot of years, but, you know, they've got a lot of other things that they have to worry about and, and look at and think of. Whereas really generally you, you really need someone, whether it's a business analyst or, or someone to kind of act as that conduit to really accurately implement and roll out new things and, and manage the ERP system because it, yeah, it's a piece of software, um, but it's really not when it comes down to it, you know? Yeah, I feel the same way. I mean, especially on the implementation side, when you're talking about getting through that, getting off the old system, onto the new system, talking about how you're going to potentially change business processes, IT is just typically not suited for that. They could maybe own it to upgrade it, you know, on an ongoing basis down the line. But yeah, getting you through that implementation, I, I feel the same way. You need someone on the business side to lead it, uh, you know, someone who understands how the business works. Right, exactly. And, and that's one of the, the things that we really always drive home when we're working with new clients. And, and when we get into that kickoff meeting, you know, we tell them like, hey, from a business standpoint, you're going to have to own this. You're going to have to be the ones to, to drive this. Um, you know, and, and really be responsible for, for pushing this out through the, through the whole organization. It's, it's not the IT person's job, frankly, to, to do that. So that gets you through around 2012. Then it Ooh, looks like geez, we, we, got go... 10 year, we got 10 years to go, man. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like you go back to exact after that. I, I did. So, so, and this is probably getting into the good part of it. The, the rest is all the, the boring stuff. But um, one of the, one of the companies I was working for there, they, they actually unfortunately had to shut down and kind of went under. Um, so I was doing some independent consulting and, and things like that. And then, um, there, there was a guy that I had worked with previously at, at exact and, and he had moved into a more of a leadership role within the organization. And, and he, him and I lived in the same area and we went out and had a drink one night and, and, you know, I'll, I'll keep it short, but he basically talked me into to coming back to, um, to exact and, and rejoining the consulting organization. And so I, he sold me on it and I said, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. So I, I came back um, kind of in more of a managerial role. I was still doing, you know, functional day-to-day -day consulting, um, working on some of the larger, high old, higher um, profile projects that they had. And then I had a team of, I want to say like seven people that, that I was kind of responsible for um, as well. So it was an opportunity to learn more about um, kind of the management side of consulting and, you know, a little bit higher than just in the weeds, um, even though I was still down in the weeds uh, a lot of days. And so I, I did that for two years, I, I want to say, um, when I went back. And then an opportunity arose um, where... McCola was kind of restructuring what the um, development team and the product team looked like. And they really had never had for a lot of years, probably since going back all the way to the McCola days, a true like product manager. So I said, that looks fantastic. You know, I've, it's an opportunity to get in and, and really kind of help shape the direction of the product and, you know, have a say in what the next version of, of McCola is going to be. And, and it was, you know, a pretty exciting thing. So I, I interviewed for that position and, and got the job and, and spent my last two years there um, as part of the part of the product team. And, and that was kind of a do everything type of job and that, you know, I was responsible for setting the direction of the product, but then I worked a lot with our, um, with our partner channel that um, McCullough had at the time and kind of helping with enablement and just kind of, um, for lack of a better word, sort of being the, the Swiss army knife, um, you know, so, so to speak, and just kind of helping out um, wherever, wherever I could there. And uh, myself and the um, other product folks and the um, director of development, we had kind of really, started to put together a plan for what the future of McCola was going to look like. And, um, you know, things don't always shake out in real life, how they shake out on, on paper. Um, and the, the company and the business kind of 
took a little different direction and, and I said, you know, it's time to look for other, um, other things. And so I ended up, um, Quick, quickly before you oh, go yeah, there, absolutely. So I, I've heard that, um, uh, like product manager roles, I've heard people describe it as a very entrepreneurial role. It's almost like running a business because you have so many priorities that you're trying to, to keep track of. And it, was that your case? Would you describe it that way? I, I would agree with that. It, and in a way too, uh, it's kind of funny. You, you've got a lot of responsibility, a lot of priorities to, um, to, to make sure that you're keeping aligned in the proper order. Um, but then no one in the organization actually reports directly to you. So you've got to ask everybody very nicely to, to do the things um, that you want to try to get done. So. So, sounds like financial <laughs> auditing. You, you got to get people to give you stuff, but you can't make them. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, you know, it was a, uh, it, it was a great experience. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade it for anything. And, and it, it taught me a huge amount about kind of the, what goes into even building an ERP product. Um, you know, prior to that, um, the, the development team there kind of worked in more of a traditional waterfall um, methodology. Um, and myself and some of the other folks on the management team, we, we mer or moved over into an agile development um, methodology. So, you know, it was just a great experience all around. And, you know, I wouldn't trade it for, trade it for anything really. Um, you know, obviously in hindsight, I, I, it would have been great if we could have, you know, collectively done a little more for the product, but sometimes there's things, um, you know, like I said, outside of your control that happened. So, <laughs> so that gets you through 2017 and, uh, where'd you go from there? So at, at that point I, I left, um, I left exact and I actually joined a, um, McCola VAR, and this is kind of getting into my first um, exposure to, to Acumatica. So, so at that point, the, the McCola channel was kind of seeing some of the writing on the wall and, and seeing that, you know, maybe things weren't going to shake out rosy for, for everyone. And, and a lot of them were kind of starting to look at other ERP products to, you know, at least bring into their portfolio. Um, so the particular VAR I worked for, um, they, they decided to go with Acumatica and, you know, I had an opportunity then to kind of lead the charge of getting them into the Acumatica space. And um, again, it was great. It was exciting. It, it was refreshing. You know, a lot of the things that were tough and were a struggle with um, the old McCola product. I mean, shoot, even installing it took half a day and that's if you knew what you were doing, you know, um, whereas Acumatica, you click a couple buttons and then, you know, 15 minutes, you've got a, you've got a site up and running. So just stuff like that. It was really a breath of, of fresh air. Um, and it was exciting to, to start getting, um, exposed to that. Why do you say refreshing? And you also specifically talk about the install. That was my exact experience as well. Coming off a legacy product, getting involved with Acumatica. First thing I noticed was the size of the install file. I'm like, this is tiny. You know, there, there's no way this could actually be the whole install. And right. Go this to the can't install, be a real product. Yeah. <laughs> it's installed. And then, Hey, I'm logging in. Wow. That's, that's amazing. It, it was refreshing and it all just comes down to modern technology, right? They, they did it uh, from scratch rather than putting lipstick on a pig, as they say, you know, it, just trying exactly. to make an old product look new. Yeah. And that's, and, and, you know, it, it's tough when you get into a product that's 30, 35 years old and you can't say, well, we're going to rebuild this from the ground up. Cause then, you know, it's going to take you 15 years to, to get everything in it. So, you know, it's a tough proposition that companies work themselves into, but man, it was just, you know, seeing Acumatic for the first time and, and really getting involved. And in I was like, this, this is what an ERP system should be. Cause the, the end of the day, everything does debits and credits. It, you know, keeps track of your inventory, you're, you're cutting POs, you're receiving inventory, you're making shipments, but it should be easy. It should be intuitive. It shouldn't be like crazy hard to go look up a sales order. And it was just all the things that I kind of, frankly, you know, as we were kind of talking about the future of, you know, colon and things like that, kind of what I envisioned, you know, an ERP would look like. So it was like, you know, I had that aha eyes wide open type of moment. <laughs> That's really cool. That, that sounds very similar to my first experience. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, and with all that said, you know, I, I had a great experience with that, um, with that reseller, but um, a couple years into that, you know, I've, I've kind of had the, um, 
entrepreneurial bug, so to speak, you know, through, through most of my life. Um, and, and the time really felt right to say, you know what, I'm going to strike out on my own and, and start my own thing. And um, I, I honestly, when I decided to, to start my own thing, kind of said, you know what, I, I'm done with ERP. I've done it for a long time. I want to do something different. I want new challenges. And, and we really kind of started the business um, really more kind of as a marketing agency and website design and, and doing things like that. And I'll be very honest, I, I found out pretty quickly that those are hard things to do with very low margin, <laughs> you know, um, doing websites and, and things of that nature. It, it's just a lot of work. Um, the marketing is, is tough and um, there's, it, it's just, you know, I, I wasn't good at it, if, if we're being very honest. <laughs> it's a more crowded space too, I would think, right? It, it is. I mean, if, if you're bidding for, you know, to get someone's business for doing a website, I, I found out, you know, you can go on Upwork and you can find somebody that'll do the same thing for 200 bucks, it, you know, so it's, it's very crowded. It's very competitive. Um, and I kind of, you know, took a step back and said, okay, well, you know, what, what am I good at? And ERP was the answer. <laughs> Well, it sounds like you were also encountering a, a phenomenon that uh, I heard described by Ed Kless. He's in the Sage space. I did a like three day workshop with him one time. He's he's got all this all this great uh, knowledge bomb type stuff. And one of them was that about ERP, the industry itself, and that it's like the mafia that uh, you <laughs> you can get in, but you, you can't get out. <laughs> that, that that is spot on, man. And, and, you know, by the time you kind of get to our age, you, everybody knows everybody and um, there, there's no leaving. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's for sure. But, but you know, I, I tried and, and said, well, let's go back to what I'm good at. And um, as a business, my, my partner and I said, you know, let's, b- before we jump in feet first to something, you know, and being very transparent, we said, we're going to act as if we don't have any experience with any ERP system and really treat this as a selection process before we decide, you know, what product we're going to, we're going to resell. So Acumatica was obviously on the list, but, um, you know, we, we took a real hard look at, at NetSuite, um, Acumatica, B1, um, Microsoft, you know, kind of the, the big players. And, and we spent a good, you know, really eight months uh, evaluating all of those solutions to really, at the end of the day, you know, we want to say when, when we sell a deal, when we take someone off of a legacy ERP system that they're maybe struggling with that hasn't been updated for a while, you know, what tool set do we want to be able to give them? What tool set do we as consultants want to have at our disposal to solve problems and help them run their business? And after, you know, that due diligence, we, we came back to Acumatica and said, you know what, this really is all around the, the best product for us to offer to, to our clients. And, you know, the, the rest is history, so to speak. I, I think probably um, job-wise that brings us up to, to almost being current, but, you know. So, I'm so- interested <laughs> real quick on that, on the NetSuite part, particularly, if you could give one or two reasons why you favored Acumatic over NetSuite, what would those be? Well, a couple of the big things with that is, is, and again, being very transparent, we actually had an opportunity to work on a NetSuite project um, with with someone that was getting off of their old um, software and they had kind of independently decided to to go to NetSuite. Um, And and honestly, for a totally SaaS web-based product, um, it feels very clunky. You know, it's something just from a user perspective that it's sort of difficult to navigate in some areas, just the way menus work, um, the inability to like easily switch out, you know, even simple things like filtering by a a column. Um, So those are big things. But then honestly, too, we're very heavy. We're very heavily focused on, on manufacturing customers. And the options that I saw at least available for, um, for NetSuite as far as manufacturing goes just really weren't 
up to the same level as as what Acumatica has from a from a manufacturing product. Interesting. I've heard the same thing from others. Yeah, especially about the manufacturing part. Yeah, I mean, listen, uh, I'll be honest, it's, it's not a terrible product. Um, you know, obviously, tons of people run their business on it. But when we're looking at, you know, folks that have, you know, really specific needs around manufacturing, um, they need their user base to be able to quickly adopt it. Um, and, and frankly, too, from a services side, I like having a, a product that we can, you know, tailor very easily as well. Um, and, you know, Acumatica fits the bill on, on all of those. It's funny about NetSuite. I feel like Acumatica has always tethered themselves to NetSuite from a marketing perspective, you know, like they're chasing NetSuite, but I don't know. I, I never really saw them as that comparable in the sense that NetSuite was always on the Oracle path, you know, they, and then eventually they did get acquired by Oracle and that's just a totally different, like, much larger enterprise philosophy. And they always seem to be running in that direction. Whereas Acumatica just always seemed to be more mid-market focused. And even the fact that their sister company is with IFS now, IFS kind of puts that upper bound on them, you know, where it's like, we're, we're not going to get into that big of a space because that's IFS territory. And to me, that's always been a very clear distinction from a business standpoint between the kind of customers Acumatica is looking for versus the kind of customers that NetSuite's looking for. Yeah, I, I tend to agree ex- exactly just from that profile of customer um, and, and who that customer is. And even honestly, I've kind of found as, as we're in competitive deals and, and we're going up against like NetSuite, sometimes those customers, they really aren't a great fit for, for us and for Acumatica just because, you know, they maybe don't need as much functionality, um, you know, and, and that's just, kind of how it shakes out sometimes but you know i think from a marketing standpoint and and really kind of where to position the product i i see acumatica fitting very nicely in that mid-market um and and folks that you know do have maybe more complex processes um you know you're not just looking to get off quickbooks you know maybe you are you know doing a lot with engineering um you're you're making things to order what whatever your process looks like it's, it's a great fit for that. And, you know, if, if you're looking at both, maybe one of us is in the wrong spot, you know? Yeah. I feel the same way. It's, it's maybe a little more oil and water than it tends to be marketed, but I, I don't know. I wonder if that's the case that, that other bars find the same thing, how, many, yeah. how much overlap there is in the deals. And, and maybe it kind of boils down to, you know, obviously NetSuite kind of being the, the first cloud ERP, so to speak. And, and maybe that just natively puts us both in the, um, in the same stratosphere. But you did go with Acumatica and what, do you remember the, ooh, I, I'm going to drill down to a month. Do you remember a month and a year that you uh, officially signed up? And became I, a I, I do. We, we officially became a VAR in October of 2020. Okay. So that fits the time frame. I'm going to read this off of a recent Acumatica.com blog post. So your, your company, Blaze IT, has been nominated for a Fast Start Partner Award. There's only three nominees, so you got a one-third chance at least. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll read the blurb. That the Fast Start Partner Excellence Award recognizes the partner who closes their first deal in the first six months and quickly acquires multiple customers in the first 18 months of partnership. So you're still in that 18 month window there, huh? We, we are. Yeah. And I, I don't know if that'll qualify us for the award again um, next summit or not, but we'll, we'll see. So um, no, I, I'm very, very proud of our team here. Um, I'm, I'm very happy that we got nominated. I, I pulled open, open the same article and I was like, Oh, Hey, look, we, we got a nomination. So, you know, it's just a testament to, to the hard work that our whole team here um, at blaze it have, have put in over the last year um i'll i'll be very transparent it was a pretty grueling year in a in a positive way you know we we sold a lot of sites um you know we're helping a lot of clients get off of their old outdated won't name any names um software and on to you know a, a scalable usable erp system um and so we enjoy doing that and it's it's really nice to kind of see that recognition um, back from from Acumatica as well. And, you know, 
from a business standpoint, we're, we're going to keep doing what we're doing. And, you know, my goal is next year at summit, we're on the list of, um, you know, top manufacturing partners. And then, um, two years from, from then we'll be on the, um, list for, for partner of the year. So I, I like to, I like to set my goals high, um, but we're going to work hard and provide the best service we, we can for our clients and, um, shoot, shoot for those goals. And it sounds like then you are still focusing on the manufacturing addition with Acumatico. We, we really are. Um, you know, I, I don't want to say we, we've necessarily drilled down into a specific vertical, but we're very focused on the, the manufacturing. We have a couple distribution um, customers, but we've really found, you know, our, our bread and butter is, is manufacturing. It's, it's what we know. Um, it's, it's what we live. I, I did it for years with Macola, uh, my partner, she comes from a aerospace background and, and manufacturing. And so it's just, it's the things that we know, it's the things that we do. Um, so really we're, we've been very focused in, in that area, really a lot around kind of industrial goods, manufacturing um, kind of in, in that area, but again, just kind of manufacturing in general is where we've really focused and, you know, from a company perspective, bring a, a lot of experience and value to, um, to our clients. Yeah, that Acumatica manufacturing edition does really seem to be hitting its stride. I mean, one recent piece of news, uh, Jessica Gadbois, I hope I'm pronouncing her last name. I, I just, I just uh, always, um, I avoid saying her last name. <laughs> <laughs> but she, uh, she used to do all the demos of the summit. I think this will be the first summit in a while where she won't be on stage. But she's now uh, running an Acumatica practice for a, a VAR, also focused on manufacturing. And to me, that says a lot that you got someone from Acumatica who knows the the skeletons, you know, of what's the, the things that aren't working great. That that she would go out and and do that. So. Yeah, I think it really seems to be hitting its stride and, and doing well out there. It, it really is. And, and I think we're, you know, not, not to tune our own horns uh, uh, more than I already have, but I, I will. Um, you know, I, I think, too, we're kind of helping Acumatica, us and the other manufacturing bars to, to find that spot and, and find that sweet spot because it really is. I mean, it's, it's better than a lot of the other manufacturing um, software is out there, especially for the, the target market that we're serving, um, you know, and the price point and, and all of that. It's just, it's a really good blend and fit. Um, and, and frankly, you know, even things like the different deployment options, um, there's just a lot of reasons for, for folks to go with, um, with, with Acumatic and again, why it's kind of become our, our hammer of choice um, in, in building out someone's ERP. <laughs> Well, congrats on that fast start nomination. Are you going to be going to the summit next week to uh, to hopefully get the award in person? We, we are, yeah. Um, my, my partner and I are both going, um, and then we're we're taking a few of the folks from the office. So I think we'll have oh, um, just thinking off the top of my head, we'll we'll have five of us there um, at the at the summit. Um, so you know, some some of our kind of greener people. I think it's going to be a great opportunity for them to really see Acumatica in full full stride, and and will be great for them to experience the um, the conference for the first time. So we're we're very excited, um, ready to see everybody in in person. You know, we're just kind of now getting back into seeing people face to face. So so very we you know we didn't make it to the one over the summer. So so very excited to be there. Yeah, it's funny that being on like on LinkedIn quite a bit myself, uh, you were one of the more active LinkedIn people, you know, I'm, I'm going back a few years and I think I first met you at the summit in San Diego, if I remember right. That and, that uh, sounds plausible. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is kind of weird, you know, to you, you sort of feel like, you know, someone online, although you really don't. And then you meet in person. It's, it's sort of this, like you, you were going 90 miles an hour online and all of a sudden it's, you know, start from square one. Hi, hi, my name's Tim. Good to meet you. <laughs> right. It's kind of a weird experience. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's like, oh, I know everything about you, but okay. Nice to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it is great to be able to have in-person events. I, I won't be making it this year, but uh, hopefully next year I'll be back into the summit routine myself. Well, we'll, we'll definitely uh, miss seeing you there. I, I always like when we get a chance to, to sit down and, and have a drink and, and chat. So yeah, hopefully next year for sure. Um, 
we'll have a opportunity to hang out some. Well, before we wrap it up here, any other uh, tidbits you'd like to share with us? Oh, I, I just appreciate um, appreciate you having me on, and I, I'm glad. I guess I get to be the first um, first guest of, of 2022. Um, <laughs> so, depending on when this airs, you know, if um, if it is before the before the summit, you know, be happy to sit down and and chat with everyone out there. We'll we'll be the ones in the um, very gaudy Blaze IT um, bomber jackets. So it should be easy to to find us and. Um, you know, again, I just, it, it's been, it's been very exciting. I'm, I'm very appreciative of the recognition from, from Acumatica and um, we're just excited as a business and, and me personally, I'm, I'm excited about, you know, the direction that, that we're going um, with Acumatica and as a business and really kind of going out and, and helping those, those clients that are stuck on old outdated software, you know, that was made, 25 years ago, 30 years ago, um, and, and helping them transition their, their operations to a, a real scalable future-proof solution like, um, like Acumatica. Well, hey, congrats again on the, the Fast Start nomination. Have a great time at Summit next week, and thanks for coming on today. Oh, really appreciate it. I'll, I'll, um, I'll have an extra drink for you um, Monday night. <laughs> Sounds like a deal. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hey, I, I really appreciate it and, and always great catching up and, you know, we'll, we'll talk real soon. All right. Well, that's it for now. We'll catch you on the next episode of AUGforums.com Real Talk. Thanks for listening and take care.